Okay, and then let's go through today's lesson. Okay, so we're going to start with my hostess today. My hostess is one of those sections, unfortunately, for some reason, I can't figure it out because it's not a very difficult section, but for some reason, it is a section that the grade 12s are struggling with the last few years. Now, you shouldn't be struggling with my hostess at all. It is important to draw the diagrams. It's important to, to know the diagrams. As long as you know the phases and you know the diagrams, and you can identify what's happening in the diagrams. There should be no reason why you should struggle with my hostess. The best way to learn my hostess is through diagrams. You study through the diagrams, you annotate the diagrams, and then you practice the questions on my hostess and you see if you can do them. Very important section is going to be to practice the questions. Okay, so we're going to start off with my osis today and just give a background into my osis and just go through my tosis again, which we learned about in grade 10 already. And if we take a look at the two, there's not much difference between my osis and my tosis. My tosis is actually just, my, sorry, my osis is actually just my tosis happening twice but we'll get to that later let's go through what we need to know about this section of the work what does caps want us to know so we're going to go through the structure of the cell uh, but we're going to focus on the things involved in meiosis and mitosis so we're going to take a look at the nucleus which has the nucleolus which turns into the chromosomes We've also are going to take a look at what is the centrosome. And the centrosome, you've been studying that since grade eight. But the centrosome, we also call it the centriole. Now, please note that the two aren't exactly the same. But for your purposes, you can treat them as the same as synonyms. The one actually splits to make the other. But you can just consider them to be synonyms and then what happens in the cytoplasm we're going to take a look at the structure of the chromosomes now we can't get meiosis and mitosis if we don't get a chromosome so we're going to take a look at what what is a chromosome how does it look well how does it form and then eventually how does it split we're going to take a look at the fact that chromosomes consist out of long strings of dna one DNA inside each chromosome, and the, and, and the DNA then contains the genes, the hereditary materials, and it also contains, um, your chromosomes also contain proteins, namely these stones that help the DNA to curl up into its specific shape into the chromosome. The number of chromosomes in a cell is characteristic of that organism. In humans, there's 46 chromosomes. Chromosomes, which are single threads, it's a single molecule in a chromosome. Single threads become double, they become double in replicated chromosomes. And each part of that chromosome is called the chromatid. And so you have, that's the typical shape of how we know what chromosomes look like. And what we see over there is a replicated chromosome held together by a centromere. Please note the difference between a centrosome or centriole and a centromere. These are different things, but they are words that sound very similar, so they're easily mixed up. So please be careful of that, so you don't mix them up in the exam. And then as a result of DNA replication, Differences between haploid and diploid. Haploid, a single set. Diploid, a double set. Think of die. Dice. Die. It's, it's, it means double. Okay. 
haploid as single set of chromosomes, diploid as double set of chromosomes. And then we're going to talk about sex cells, gametes, because that's going to be important for meiosis, because meiosis forms sperms and egg cells or ovums. And so that's why we need to know the differences between gametes and normal body cells, which we call somatic cells. Somatic cells. Let me just get a, a nicer color here. I don't like the black. Then we also need to know uh, on the sex chromosomes are called gonosomes. They form the gonads, gono, gonosomes. And then the rest of your body is the autosomes. And the, the sex chromosomes, the gonosomes, is going to determine the sex of the organism. And we normally say we either have an XX in the case of females or we have an XY in the case of males. And those are the gonosomes. It's normally chromosome pair, no, the last chromosome pair. In the case of humans, it's chromosome pair number 23. So number 45 and 46 that is forming the gonosomes on a karyotype, which we'll take a look at what a karyotype is in a moment. Just hold on with that. And then we need to do some provision, uh, revisions, uh, not provision, revision on the process of mitosis. So that's what CAPS wants us to know for this lesson. Okay, so what is a chromosome? A chromosome consists of DNA that is coiled up into a specific shape around proteins called histones. So each of side of these chromosomes, there's a centromere in the middle, a centromere in the middle combining them. But each side of the chromosome contains a single strand of DNA that is curled up into that chromosome. On that chromosome, there are sections that code for specific features. And those are called genes, genes. They code for specific proteins, which in turn then codes for specific characteristics. Chromosomes only before, uh, uh, we only see chromosomes before uh, division. They're normally part of the chromatin network. So if we take a look at the cell and we take a look at the nuclear membrane and we take a look at the nucleolus, the nucleolus is the chromatin network. And that is what is going to form my 46 chromosomes. So that is going to curl up into the chromosome shape. And then the chromosome network was shortened and thickened to become a chromosome. That's what I just said. What's going to happen when the nucleolus forms the chromosomes? Okay. Now, important with that DNA replication, it needs to happen before the chromosomes can form. Before we can have any division, we need to go and we need to go through DNA replication. And that happens during interphase, interphase, which is actually not a part of meiosis or mitosis, although we do mention it because it has to happen in between. And the, even the word interface, it says inter, in between phases of meiosis or in between phases of mitosis. Both daughter cells must have the same genetic material as the original mother cell. That's why we have replication, so we can double up on the DNA before it splits. After replication, a single stranded chromosome consists of two identical units of chromatids. Now, co connected with a centromere. Now, when we go through this process, please let us make clear about what happens when. This is my original, unreplicated, unreplicated, hasn't replicated yet, unreplicated chromosome. It then goes through replication, forming a double one that's connected by a centromere. Each of these strands are the same. Then, each one of those strands we now call a chromatid. But now during anaphase, what's going to happen is that my centromere is going to split and, and, or anaphase 2 in the case of meiosis, and each chromatid is going to move to a different part of the, or different cell. 
and then the chromatid becomes a daughter chromosome. We don't call it a chromatid once it's split. We only call it a chromatid if it's part of the replicated chromosome. And once it splits, we then call them daughter chromosomes. Let's move on to the next slide. Chromosomes, each somatic cell, each normal body cell. Now I'm not talking about the gametes, I'm not talking about sperm, I'm not talking about egg cells, they are the exception. Contain the same amount of chromosomes, and in the case of humans, it's 46 chromosomes, or a double set, and a double set we always call diploid, or the symbol we use for it is 2N, a diploid number of chromosomes. Each chromosome in one set has a partner. There's a partner. Hello, partner. Howdy, partner. There we go. And Oh, yeah, I know. One of you raised your hand. I know that was a very bad joke. Sorry about that. Um, people, then. So there's a double set. There's a double set. Okay. And each chromosome is one set in the partner and the similar size and shape and genetics. One set is from mom. Okay. Oh, oh, this is my two sets from mom. We call them homologous chromosomes. Oh, there's the name. Homologous chromosomal pairs. And we actually receive one from mommy and we receive one from Daddy. Uh, this is called the homologous homo chromosome P. Homo means the same, logos means logic. Homo, the same, homo, sexual, you like the same sex. Um, so um, homologous, uh, it's the same, homo, logic, logos. Okay. Then people, haploid, sex cells only contain one set of chromosomes. In the case of humans, it's 23, because it's only a single set and not 46, like a diploid set. And when they choose to form a zygote, and then they form a normal cell, a double set again. So this is one N, this is one N, they come together, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and they form a two N X cell, a diploid zygote. Diploid, diploid, right? One plus one mate, two. Okay, let's take a look at a karyotype. Now, a karyotype is a complete set of diploid, diploid, double set, the double set of chromosomes, arranged according to size, shape, and the number of homologous pairs. Normally, what we do is we arrange them from the, uh, the longest to the shortest, except for the gonosomes at the very end there. And then, 22, well, 22 of them, what, 22 of them in humans, there we go, is autosomes, and then there's one pair of gonosomes that is determining the sex. Okay, so if we have over here, we have an X and a Y, you can see they look different. So this is a boy, congratulations, you are having a boy, because he's got an X and a Y chromosome. If it is a female, it would have been an XX chromosome. So this is Boys, a uh, boy, should be in blue actually, boy, and XX is a girl on the gonosomes. So the gonosomes are the chromosomes that determine the sex of the organism. Okay, let's take a look at the cell cycle. Now, 90% of the time, 90% of the time, 90% of cells spend their time in interphase. During interphase, some cells never go to any other phase. They always stay in interphase. There's a growth phase. There's a replication phase where we replicate the DNA, and then we get ready for cell division, and we go into meiosis or mitosis. And over there, we have the rest. Now, I always remember it. When I take a look at the cell cycle, I always remember IP on the mat. Okay, so I just imagine that IP on the mat. Okay, IP mat. Interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Okay, 
Okay, interface, proface, metaphase, anaphase, telephase. And what's going to happen during my process is I'm going to be on the map twice. You're going to have interface, then you're going to have preface, metaphase, anaphase, telephase, proface, metaphase, anaphase, telephase. We're going to have interface, then you're going to have proface one, pro, uh, metaphase one, anaphase one, telephase one, and then you're going to have, again, proface, proface two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telephase two. Sorry, that almost looks like a hashtag there. No hashtags here, please. Now, why do we go through mitosis? We go through mitosis, no, so we're going to leave this part. We're only going to go through mitosis today, not meiosis yet. Is to, <coughs> we divide the somatic cells, not the, the gonads, okay? And then the growth of being asexual reproduction happens through mitosis. It produces two daughter cells that are genetically identical to the mother cell, and we're going to be on the net. Okay, so let's take a look at how we do it. We go through, okay, interface, interface, very easy. Interface, we go through replication. Then we go into mitosis now. Prophase is the first step. The threads of the chromatin network shorten and they start to form a chromosome. So we go from a nucleolus and it forms these chromosomes. You can see them over there. Then they are double-stranded. They're already replicated. So it's replicated chromosomes, nice replicated chromosomes with two sides, two chromatids, connected by a centromere. Then the nuclear membrane starts to disappear. There's the nuclear membrane. It starts to disappear. And the centromere splits into centrioles. Okay, sorry, not centromere. Now, I make the mistake that I told you guys not to make. The centrosomes split into the centrioles. So there's a centriole, there's a centriole. And they then also go to opposite poles of the cell, as you can see here. And they then form spindle fibers, which is these dotted lines that you see over here. The dotted lines that you see. Okay. Just checking if there's any messages so far in the chat box i don't see any yet so that's fine and then from there let's go to the next phase metaphase metaphase means middle meter middle the phase in the middle the um, spinal fire is attached to the centromeres and they move them to they move the chromosomes to the middle of the cell to the equator of the cell metaphase and then they split in anaphase anaphase they split the centromeres divide in half and each daughter chromosome goes to the opposite side of so each chromatid goes to the opposite side of the cell but now we don't call it chromatids anymore now we call it daughter chromosomes. And the cytokinesis, the splitting of the cytoplasm is going to start in the middle of the cell. It will start. Telophase. Then the daughter chromosomes uh, are at the poles of the cell. The spindle fibers disappear. The nuclear membrane appears again, as you can see there. There's a nice nuclear membrane now. The nucleus forms cytokinesis complete, which means a splitting. Kinesis means split, to split, to cut cyto, the cytoplasm, and then two identical daughter cells have been formed. Okay, and people, that is your revision on mitosis. That's the revision on mitosis. Um, guys, can I ask, is there any questions you can also add your questions in the chat if you want to any questions on mitosis 
if we finish with mitosis, it means that we're going to start with meiosis tomorrow properly, not just like this introduction. Okay, I don't see any questions in the chat box and I'm not hearing anyone. I don't see any hands going up. Guys, thank you then. Please go complete that electronic version of the, the, the worksheet I gave over the weekend. Thank you very much. Okay, a centriole. Nice question, Latabu. Okay, so the centriole is the same as the centrosome. Let me make a drawing for you to, uh, to illustrate it better. Okay, so just adding a new page, new one, well, view, not view, journal, new page after. Uh, uh, let me just add journal and let me just make it a normal page. Okay, so when we have the cell, when we have the cell, I'm going to draw a cell now. There's my cell. And I have a nucleolus. In my nuclear, uh, sorry, nucleus, in my nucleus, I have the nucleus. And then somewhere in here, I've got a little organelle. And that's called the centrosome. That is called the centrosome. Now, during meiosis and mitosis, the centrosome splits and a part of the centrosome moves to that side and a part moves to that side. And now we call them centrioles. centrioles. Now they're called centrioles. And then what happens in my nucleus, remember, is this, is, I'm just going to make a drawing here, this starts to form my chromosomes, my replicated chromosomes. And my replicated chromosomes are connected by a centromere. If you, if you listen to the word, you will hear why we call them similar. Centry, it keeps them central. They're in the middle, the middle of the chromosome, and they, they arrange the, uh, around the, the they arrange things around the middle. And so it has to do, that's why you hear that word center coming through the whole time. Okay. Okay, so can you please upload this revision video on Google Classroom? Um, I always try to add all of the videos. I did add yesterday's video already today. And yes, I will add it. Maybe not today already, but then tomorrow, I just need to convert it first before we put it onto YouTube. And then uh, from YouTube, I then upload it onto, I then upload the link, the YouTube link onto Google Classroom. You can always use something like Safe from Net or Keepbit or YouTube downloader or whatever to get the, the version of that. Okay. There are a few lessons that I still need to add that I have missed um, that I'm still going to add on um, human impact. Okay, Ruan, you've got a question? Uh, yes, I wanted to ask, uh, where in the grade 12, grade 12 um, syllabus will the grade 11s finish up until? Um, there's, uh, if, I have my, if I have my way, and I'm going to try my best, and I don't think it's going to happen, and I'm going to try actually finish your whole curriculum or actually go through all of the theory work, which I compiled in 26 separate lessons, and we're already on lesson seven. I'm gonna try and get to it before we get to the end of the year. I don't think I'm gonna quite manage that. I think what we'll be left with is most probably uh, plant hormones we won't be able to finish up with. And then also evolution, uh, the recap on evolution, and human evolution. We won't be able to do this year. And we'll leave that for next year. And then um, the strategy when we get um, to next year is to, to actually uh, physically go through everything again once more, but then focus on how the questions are asked. And the old year, focusing on how are the questions asked, how are we going to answer them, and we push you guys. Guys, if, if by the end of next year, you don't get 90 to 95% or more for my subject, then 
then you know you haven't put in the effort. And that's why we're starting with, uh, and especially because you have less to study for next year. Um, not like this year's matrix, which also has human impact. There should be no reason why we won't finish with a 90 to 95 percent or more average for uh, for the uh, for the HP school. I hope that answers your question. I hope that's what you asked. If I understand you correctly. Yes, right. sir. Okay, so did you add this lesson PDF document on Google Class? Yes, it's already on Google Class. It's lesson seven. It's lesson seven. Okay, it's already on Google Class. And there's two more videos for you to watch on my toasters on under lesson seven. I did put that lesson right at the top today. So if you go to the grade 12 Google Classroom, please. Not the grade 11 classroom, the grade 12 Google Classroom, it's right at the top today. Well, no, it will be second from the top because I added one more task after that. Okay. Okay, thanks guys. I will then go do that. Go watch those other two videos, please. And please go and do that, the electronic version of that quiz. Uh, the more we do these things and we get it and we repeat it day after day after day after day, it gets into your long-term memory. And as it gets into your long-term memory, that's what we want. Because by the time you get to your prelim exams next year, you, you just have to read through the material because it's already in your head. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you, sir.